Hello, friends from the interwebs. Aaron Stewart from The Little Black Couch. I know it's been a hot minute since we've had the time to chat from The Little Black Couch, but um, yeah, it has been it has been something. So we're going to talk about it really quick, but we cannot get started until we get to try our in intro, right? Now, this is the voiceover intro. Um, it's absolutely awful, but it saves me a lot of time with the podcast portion of it. So, so bear with me and me and trying to save a little time um, so I can be with my family. <laughs> you love entrepreneurship? I do. I have been researching and living entrepreneurship for the last 30 years, and I believe entrepreneurship is the most efficient method to solve world problems. And I am passionate about helping those who dare to dream find solutions to these problems as they learn to live their definition of success. Hi, my name is Aaron Stewart, and I am so glad you have joined us today. And I welcome you now to The Little Black Couch. A journey in entrepreneurship. It ain't perfect, folks, but um, hey, saves me some time. You know, those things are funny, right? Because when you record them, you, you know, they be animated, do all this kind of stuff. But then when you have to listen to your own voice, I'm passionate. Whatever. Okay. So yeah, a couple things today. We have been working uh, nonstop, it feels like, on um, Joe's Post. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit. On Joe's Post and getting along, it's, it's so important that we get this right just for launch because the, auto the automations make it run. And if you're not automating all of it, it could be a nightmare. It could get out of control super quickly um, because it's such an intense system. So we're just trying to cross the T's and dot the I's and make sure that it's working right. But anyhow, so this this actually provides a little test of something that um, we want to keep working on. So, all right. Um, let me, let's see, where are we anyway? Do we even know where we're at? I don't know where we're at. Okay, so a couple things really quickly that I've, I've discovered as we've been working through this automation. Um, a lot, of, a part of what we do is, you know, we, we create the graphics on the fly and that causes some interesting problems as we found out. So th that's the coolest part about being an entrepreneur is you go out to solve a problem and as you dive into a problem and you start looking at all the different aspects of it, there's always things that pop up that you're not expecting. So this was definitely one of those times and I'm going to, so I'm going to, I'm going to bring up my screen really quickly. Um, if I'm, if I can here, we'll go here. Okay. So when you do, when you do um, lives, you can do them one of two ways. So I'm going to bring up my screen real, well, I'll do this real quick. You can do them one of two ways, right? You can do it like this where I sit in my office. I've got my camera set up. I've got my computer. I've got the nice little, right? Horizontal sort of, view it's very easy to make one of these videos work it's easy to put a thumbnail up on it to make it nice and what do we know about thumbnails thumbnails are quick our thumbnails make it so your video is clicked three times more than if you don't have a thumbnail so thumbnails are kind of a big deal right if somebody comes to your library of videos and they're scanning and they're trying to figure out what to, to read research shows us that thumbnails make a huge difference okay so on youtube and on facebook you got to have your thumbnails. Okay. And they're a pain. They're a pain to make. So we've been trying to figure out a way to automate these and we figured out how to automate making the graphic. Um, and that's been the easy part. But the funny, the funny thing has been is as we've gone out of here, I'll bring up my, so this is a, this is a, where is it here? Okay. So this is my little black couch video page. Okay. And so all my videos here, let's see if I can make this bigger so it's easier to see. Ooh, no, <laughs> let's, let's do this then. Does that work? Come on, baby. Oh, there you go. Okay. So that made it a little bigger. Okay. So these are like, these are all the videos. These are the ones that I do sort of all the time. Um, and then you've got different channels, the training. This is actually going to be a little training. So maybe it will have a green one. 
But typically, all my live videos come out looking like this. They've got the, the fluorescent green, right? It's about pa um, pattern interrupt. I want people to see the green and stop as they're scrolling, and so that's what I do. Um, is it a very professional look? Yeah, you know, a lot of thumbnails aren't. They're just supposed to at least communicate very quickly and accurately what the video is about, right? It's your hook. We always talk about these hooks. Your thumbnail is a perfect example of a hook. Okay, so when you do live videos, and I'll bring up this one really quickly here, um, and I am going to pause it because I, I hate listening to these things. So, so we'll stop. Okay, so this one was in my car, right? And so when you do it in your car, you've got your phone up, and I have a little thing that holds it so I can be super safe because I'm safety, um, I'm very conscientious when it comes to safety. And um, I learned last night that my daughter doesn't want me to die, so that's nice. But anyway, so when I'm driving then, you do a video, well now you can't have it, right? And I guess I could figure something out to do it, but most of us when we go live, we just hold the phone up, boom, and we just kind of go live. Well, that creates this, this very, right, um, odd-shaped video. And if you, if you just look over there at the thumbnails here, you can kind of see that those thumbnails are really, you know, not shaped the same way as, as this. So it does cause some problems. So if we go back to my video page, you can see here, I don't have a thumbnail on this one. So that's hideous. When you look at all the other ones that I have around, there's no thumbnail. Now that one sticks out. And I know that it's not going to be clicked very often because it looks ridiculous. Oh, look at that. I didn't know we have a Mickey Mouse hand that shows up. That's cool. Okay, but, but then if you go and try to actually do a thumbnail like you've done standard on all the other ones. Hey okay, everyone, this. Aaron. Shh, Aaron, quiet. You, you get this. So if I go up and edit my video here and you go in to put in your thumbnail, let's bring these up. So this is just a standard normal thumbnail that I use everywhere else and it comes out and it looks like, you know, it looks ridiculous. Oh, let me see here. I guess I want to leave. Right, so it looks like this. What drives you? It's all stretched out. It looks ridiculous. It's horrible. So that had been driving me absolutely crazy. I hated it, right? So I had to figure out a solution. So here's the cool, here's the cool thing. There is a solution. It's not really broadcast anywhere. It's not shared anywhere, but I want to share it with you, my peeps. There's a real um, easier way to do this. And so I'm going to bring up, this is Photoshop now, and I did this quick little graphic. So this is how you have to handle those. So to do a thumbnail that works really well for those videos that you do live just on your mobile phone, you need to create a graphic that is 1080 here, 1080 wide, and 1920 long. And yes, this is the same size as an Instagram story post. Okay, so 1080 by 1920, that's the size you want to make it. And then you want to position a, a graphic here. Now, what's the size of this graphic? The best size that works is a thumbnail. If you just use your standard thumbnail graphic and put it on here, which is, what is it, 1280 by 720. So if you take your just standard 1280 by 720 graphic and you position it here, and then you obviously, um, 1200's wider than 1080, so you shrink it to get it so it fits within the 1080, that, those dimensions are perfect. And you position it between this 330, so it's 330 pixels down, and that positions at 940 pixels here. You don't really need to worry about that. If you get the top edge right at 330, and then you save this out and you use this, then I've put this big down here so I know exactly what this is for. But then if you save this out and you upload this as your thumbnail, let me show you what that looks like. Please be quiet, don't talk, okay. We don't like it when he talks. So if we, if we go here, and we edit this video. Oh, don't, don't folks. Okay, we edit this video here. I've already uploaded it. I go to my thumbnail. So this is, this is the one here, right? So I'll select it. I've now added some fancy stuff to it, whatever. Um, but so I, oh no, I already selected it. So I'll select this one and then save. And then we exit out of this little pig. And we will refresh the screen here. And now, look, look how pretty it is. It's so pretty. Okay, oops, refresh, please. 
Um, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. What is going on? I've got like a, a loop going on here. Huh. Interesting. So if I, let's see, I didn't refresh. Refresh it. Come on. Okay. If I hit refresh, don't, don't, be, don't be naughty. What's this thing doing? It keeps showing my old, what I'm going to get rid of these damn Photoshop. We're going to quit Photoshop because it seems to be causing us some real problems. Sure, I'll save you. Oh, so it's just lagging, it looks like. So anyway, if we refresh that, it's lagging horribly, isn't it? I don't even know if this is going to work. So come on, Paige. I'm going to have to cancel out of the whole thing. Yeah, this is, I'm just lagging big time here. Um, anyway, I don't even know if this video is going to work at this point. I've got screens upon screens, and here's the problem of the whole... So back to the news feed. Oh, my word. Let's see if we can't. Okay, that's at least looks normal. Okay, so we'll go back to a little black couch and we'll go black back to my videos here. Boom. And we should have now something that looks nice. Is this, why is this doing this? And we, <laughs> it's like playing my video back. Did I hit finish or something? We should have now something that looks nice. Is this, why is this doing this? <laughs> and look, it's like a thing inside a thing. It's this like is really bad. Video back. Did I hit finish or something? We should have now something that look, looks nice. I'm gonna nice. just close this Safari. Thing. We're just gonna close it. Why is this doing this? Whew, folks, that was brutal. Anyway, yeah, that wasn't good. So anyway, what I wanted to say is if you do save it by 1080 by 1920 and you position it right at 330, then it actually works really well. Do I dare bring this up again? Oh my gosh, I don't even know if I dare. I really wanna show you though. Let's see, we'll try it again. Um, this is a bad video, folks. Don't do this at home when you're live. Nobody likes it. But I really wanna show you how pretty it is. Come on, pretty. Okay. Go to my videos. Um, man. Oh, it's because it's showing me. Oh, it's showing me live. Oh, that's brutal. Okay. That's not very good. Okay. So anyway, let's go back. <laughs> that's what the problem was. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. So that was the problem is it's because it's, it's got my live video going. So it's like video inside a video inside a video. That's cool. That's cool. So here it is, right? Don't use goals the wrong way. So see how that looks just exactly the same as all my others. It's pretty, right? So I'll go and do this one real quick. So this is a video of a video on my own. Hey everyone, Wait, Aaron Stewart. Quiet. Okay. So, and then we'll go here. I've already got it uploaded. We'll go here. We will edit the video. Um, we'll go into, so this is the standard one, right? If I choose the, the 1080 by 1920 and I save it and I go back out and I refresh, it's going to show me the live thing again, but um, we'll go down here. Dude, what drives you? Okay, so that's the way to do it. So now you've got very nice and pretty uh, thumbnails, even when you're doing, and so I'd quit, do, actually, I'd quit doing the lives because I, I hated how bad it looked when I uploaded a thumbnail and did all that. And you know that thumbnails are important. So you'd upload that and then boom, it was hideous. And I'm not a big fan of the hideous. So we're gonna turn off Safari and be done with it. Okay, so we'll go back to normal view. Okay, so that's hopefully some training that helps some folks. D definitely take time. Obviously with uh, Josie Post and the things that we're working on, we hope that people, we're gonna make it super easy to have thumbnails and, and then have them post automatically. And so this was one that became, uh, obviously if we were posting normal sized thumbnails to a you know, 
1080 by 1920 video that you've gone live with, then all of a sudden your video library looks horrible. So we had to come up with a way to solve that. That's how we solved it. It took a lot of trial and error, but we got it solved. So that is coming. That is going to be built into Joseph Post. So your, all your videos will be able to tell if you've done it, you know, just on your mobile phone or if you've done it like I'm doing right now, just from your computer. Normally, we'll be able to tell which one it is and we create a graphic that will then work and make your library look pretty. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Your videos will always look professional and snazzy. So there you have it. Okay. And then on this uh, particular video, the, the title of this video was, was about sometimes the, it hurts to be an entrepreneur and it does. And this has been, um, you get into it and you start working on problems and there's always, there's always way more problems. There's way more challenges than you anticipate, even when you know, I mean, going in, I've been doing this a long time, going into this Josu Post project, I knew that we were going to face situations and problems that they're impossible to understand when we dove in, right? And that's why you surround yourself with really good people and experts in certain parts and then in certain portions. And then when you run up against something where you can't figure it out, you quickly go out rather than trying to solve it yourself, you quickly go out and find an expert or two that can help you solve it more quickly. Okay, and I love to learn, I love to learn from those people how to solve problems. So if I'm faced with that problem down the road, I've already had experience with the problem. I've had an expert take me through the problem. Chances are pretty good. If I see it again, I'll be able to solve it myself and I won't need the expert. And that's honestly how you pick a good coach. The very best coaches and the very best mentors are, are trying to teach you so you don't need them anymore. The very worst coaches out there are the ones that are trying to teach you just enough that you can't really get too far away from the coach and you're always going to need this coach as a security blanket. Worst coaches ever, okay? Any coach worth their salt is trying to uh, help you understand everything they have to offer and so you don't need them anymore and you can move on to a coach that offers something new. Okay, I just... To have the same coach your whole entire life doesn't work unless that coach is way out ahead of you and is always learning. Okay, that's the kind of coach, I guess ultimately that's the kind of coach you want. You want somebody who is willing to give you everything that they have to offer to help you get to a point where you want to be so you don't need them for those particular areas anymore, but they are advancing themselves all the time and so you can always improve with them. Okay, that's uh, my mentor, Fred Shoemaker. I've, had, I've, I've received coaching from him for over 12 years now. He is always out ahead of me. He is always learning something new. And um, I know he's always out there learning something new. And that I want, you know, my experiences with what I'm learning, I share back with him. He takes those and continues to run ahead of me. Um, so he's always got something to fill me back up with. And I love that about those are wonderful coaches, okay? But if you are in a relationship with a coach, and I did not mean to go this direction, but if you are in a, a situation where your coach doesn't give you enough to stand on your own two feet and do it yourself for whatever you're working on, and there's nothing going forward past that, it's a bad coach. Time to throw them away and go find somebody else that just wants you to, to succeed. And if they're only willing to go so far with you, that's willing to hand you off to the next coach that you need, that, that, and they can tell you what you need next and help you find the next expert if they're not willing to go that direction themselves. If that's not the way they're going, then so be it, right? If you're only taking to me, if you're only going to Cincinnati, awesome, I will ride with you to Cincinnati and then I will you know, find somebody else to take me the rest of the way to what, New York City? I don't wanna go to New York. I've had enough of that place, anyway. Um, and if you can make it there, it is not true that you can make it anywhere. Garbage song. That is not true. Jazzy, but garbage. Okay. The la so the last thing I wanted to share, just a quick story about, so back in the first week of June, I um, blew out my Achilles. Um, apparently, that happens as you age. Not cool, but it happens. So I was out playing um, ward softball with our, our young single adult ward. And I was shagging some balls with these wonderful young people. 
that I absolutely love and adore. Uh, I just love that stage of life. And it's so fun to work with kids that are that age that are just so excited for what's coming, you know? And um, anyway, so I was playing with them and, and shagging some balls from whatever. I took off running after a ball. I decided, you know what, I can't, I'm not gonna catch this thing. So I shut it down. And as I was almost back to walking pace, boom, my Achilles blew out. So uh, ruptured, I guess. So I have been dealing, that was the first week of June. It has been hurting me ever since. I have been in a, a horrible boot since that time. And um, until, until actually last week. And that, that's where this story kind of gets interesting. I have been suffering through this thing for a long time. The doctors can't do anything. I have full range of motion. They don't want to operate on it uh, because that can cause a, a lack of, of, you know, where you lose range of motion. So I've been just dealing with it, like wearing a dumb boot and trying to heal up. My daughter's, you know, petrified, paranoid that I'm going to wear. We've got a trip planned to Disneyland later this month. And she is just petrified that I'm going to be in the boot right at Disneyland, you know, Disneyland on it, like a, you know, jazzy scooter. She's petrified. She does not want this to happen. So I'm trying to heal up and get better as quickly as I can. So I was talking with a friend of mine who is also a ClickFunnels fellow, but he is a nutritionist and trainer over at BYU, Brigham Young University on the football team, on the football staff. Um, very smart guy, intelligent guy. We actually served in the mission field together in Japan. So we've known each other for a long time. And I, I guess the last five years or so become, well, not probably 10, more than that. Anyway, we're good friends. He's a good dude. So anyway, he comes over. So I tell him, look, I tell him about my foot, that it's still killing me. And he can't believe that we're into this thing. You know, it's what, four or five months later? And I'm still walking around in a boot. You know, typically it's a six week thing and, you know, you come out of it. Some people have to go a full year. And so everybody just decided like, okay, um, my situation is I'm probably just going to be in a boot for a year or painful. It's going to be painful for a year. Eventually it will heal, but that's just life. And so I had kind of accepted that, that that was my life. And I had accepted that it was just going to be hard for the next year. And it was just going to hurt for the next year. Anyway, I was talking to him about it and he said something super interesting that I, and then, and then came over. He said, look, you're, you're, you're just treating the symptoms. You're not treating the, the disease, the real problem. And I'm like, the real problems, my ruptured Achilles, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, no, no, it's not. Your ruptured Achilles is the result of other parts of your body not working properly and not being in a, a proper state. And I'm like, he goes, I'm, I'm coming over. Um, he said, well, I'm coming over tomorrow. Before you come, I want you to take a bunch of Advil and Tylenol because you're going to be screaming bloody murder when I get there. And I'm like, I don't know what in the world you think is going to go on. I mean, I probably outweigh him by 60 pounds. I mean, he's not going to take me. I'll tell you that right now. So, But he came over um, the next day, which was actually a week ago today. He came over and he had this big, long, still pole and it had like a big ball on the end. It was totally still. And then on the other top, it was just sort of a rounded but kind of more narrow, pointed, not pointed, because it was still rounded, but one was a big end and one was a smaller end. He had me get on my stomach and, uh, and then he started feeling around my calf muscle and my hamstring. And then um, uh, before I knew it, he had the, the narrow part of this pole jammed in my calf muscle and he was just absolutely pushing on it. And I, I literally, I was screaming bloody murder. I, I absolutely, I was pounding on the floor. I, I wished somebody could be there to hit me in the head with a hammer because it hurt so bad that I could barely keep, I, I couldn't keep my mind straight. I mean, I was literally freaking out. And anyway, he continued to just feel around and just go after every single knot. And 30 minutes of total torture, awful. Went to my hamstring, got there went to my soleus, which I did not know that word before, but the, the side, like underneath the back part of your calf muscle, he got in there and there was some knots and things in there. Absolutely disaster, horrible, brutal, hurt like crazy. Um, but the whole time he said, dude, you know, this is going to help. This is going to help. And I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. And he kept saying, I'm treating the disease. I'm treating the problem, right? Anyway, he gets done. I, frankly, my calf was just bruised up and hurt like crazy. Um, awful. Um, but say, and, and, and so I could only feel the pain on my calf and I gotta be honest with you. It was nice to 
it was nice to experience pain somewhere else in my body. I was kind of getting sick of always just having my foot hurt, right? So the pain was so much worse in my calf, I kind of got a break from the pain in my Achilles, which I was completely grateful for. But um, the calf started to feel better in the next hour or two and started to heal up. Well, lo and behold, my foot feels way better. Like, way better. Turns out that my calf had just been so tight and so many knots and my hamstring and everything so tight. I'm not very flexible anyway. Getting older, look, I sit a lot. I do a lot of this, right? I'm not, anyway. He worked all those out and it took the pressure off my Achilles. And that's kind of the lesson here. And I've been healing up since. I, I, I now am personally wrenching on my calf to make sure I keep it loose. Because I have in the last week made more progress than I had in the previous five months. Where this is literally healing. Like I think that I'm going to be in pretty good shape in you know a couple weeks when we go to Disneyland. I am just absolutely ecstatic. So the, the moral of the story, the lesson to this for, to me, and I've seen this so many times in entrepreneurship, is that sometimes we're in the middle of real pain, real hurt, and we're just allowing that pain to continue on and sort of, we accept it. I'm like, ah, oh, man, it stinks. But it's just the way it is right now. But what if there is something we can do where, where we treat the disease, we treat the problem as to why things are just continually hurting. It may be a little more painful for a little bit. It may be horribly painful for a little bit. But maybe there's a way for us to free up something that makes it possible for us to heal and get better and our company to start growing again. There's, there's some examples of this. I think ClickFunnels has definitely tried to do that. When Russell came out with his big announcement and they changed the pricing, they put in some more education to hopefully help the the um, folks that are paying for ClickFunnels to learn more so the software becomes helpful to them. Um, it, it caused a lot of angst for a lot of people, a lot of pain. Um, you hear, you know, Russell's canceling Inner Circle for a while. I'm sure that that's painful, that uh, that hurts. But um, the, the short-term extreme pain, if it frees you up so you can heal some things that were sort of bothering and holding you back, so you can then heal and move forward, they're totally worth it. So look at your business and see what things are bothering you, what things are painful, and what things continually to be, continue to be painful day to day. Identify those and then see if there's a solution or a problem or an investment or a, a hire or something that could, short term, probably hurt a little bit more, right? And hurts cash flow, hurts um, maybe the um, you know, maybe the feel in the office, like I, I really like to not have a lot of people around me. So I really like, but can I bring somebody in to help me deal with some things that I don't like to deal with? Possibly you could do, is there a piece of software we could buy that could help us? Is some, there are some automations that we could put in place? Could we hire somebody to help us with some things to make our business more efficient? Look at those things and they might in the short term hurt more. They might, they may cause you to scream bloody murder for 30 minutes or longer, but then maybe your business can heal and move forward and progress because you've dealt with this thing that's just been hurting for a long time. So that is the lesson for today. I know it's been, again, a long time since I've sat here at the Little Black Couch and we haven't seen Buddy. Let's check the, oh, so Buddy was a little shocked with, uh, shocked with the message. So yeah, so that was good. So Buddy was a little shocked. It's rare, it's rare that I shock Buddy, so that was good. Buddy the Couch here with me for 20 some odd years. He's the best friend an entrepreneur can have, no question about it. Love you, buddy. Okay, so thanks for joining me here on The Little Black Couch. Please take a look at your business. If there's anything that you can do to improve, um, and it, even if it hurts a little bit, give it a chance, and you'll see your business heal. Things will change, and you'll get better. Thank you for being an entrepreneur. Thank you for joining me. We are, we are on the front lines. We are the ones who learn and grow and take on risks so we can solve problems for other people and hopefully make their lives better for them down the road. It's what we do. It's the, it's the, um, it's the cross we bear. It's the badge we carry. It's just the way it is. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, Aaron Stewart from Little Black Couch. Do good. Be well. Hey, 
everyone, I want to really thank you so much for joining me on your entrepreneurship journey. If there's anything you learned today or if there is a topic you would like me to discuss in the future, I would really love to hear from you. I do have a favor to ask. Would you please subscribe to our podcast or Facebook page and please like, share, and use the hashtag the little black couch. It would really help get this message out and hopefully help more people like us. Now let's get out and change the world together.